Hello. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It has, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, so everyone's just been really ill and it's taken a lot of time out from uh, everything that isn't just normal bike work and it hasn't given me an opportunity to do any more YouTubing because I've just been looking after the family, getting bikes fixed and that's been the priorities really. But everything seems to have settled a little bit, the weather's changing, it's sunny at the moment, it's been really wet but hopefully it will continue to improve, it's, it's warmer than it has been so it's the window out there. Um, so yeah here we are, Hamburg Cycles, I can't remember what episode this is, I'll, I'll find out when I post it. And this one, it's a bit of a meander, a bit of a, a chat about this bike I've got here, which is a specialised tarmac. Um, it's got a big ride coming up. My, my customer is off uh, to uh, New York, I think, for a little trip. So he wants it spick and span for that. A um, little bit of work to do on the brakes and the bottom bracket, which I've done already, that was uh, just needed the bearing serviced and now I'm onto a wheel so particularly the rear one um, this one is an Envy rim with a Hope Mono rear hub um, I've taken it apart it was really sort of gunked up with old grease and dirt and water and everything else so I've taken it all apart it's on the bench um, we'll put that back together you can see what's inside a hope hub it's sort of interesting you see how the mechanism works how it all goes together and then maybe we'll have a look at just some mods and sods in the workshop i think i've got a couple of tools i wanted to show you so we'll do those and if there's anything else i'll tap that on at the end so let's go and have a look at this hub in true tv style here's one i made earlier so this is the internals of a hope hub and for the most part they are all very very similar be it a pro 2 a pro 4 a mono and any of the other seal bearing hope hubs they've got a similar system of the way they go together similar ratchet system and it's pretty foolproof it does take a little bit of work to do if you're not familiar with it but there are manuals online and they're hope sell bearings and the tools to get everything apart and it, apart from that kit you don't need loads of stuff so in front of me i've got a vice which is nice and handy to use but not essential a hammer which is definitely essential and um, this one's a ball pin i don't know the weight of it 0.5 pounds a good weight um any hammer to an extent will do um the heavier the hammer the less effort it will need but you might need to be a little bit more gentle with it so this lighter weight one means that i'm not gonna just smash anything apart basically so hammer and then the last thing which i've very smugly kept in this little box here which had a, a design light in it is my hope bearing press bits so we'll come to that in a sec so on the bits of uh, blue roll we've got here there's the bearings there's the end caps the axle the free hub or driver depending on what you want to call it some spacers for the hub and then these little fellas which are the pulls and the springs. And this is the fiddliest bit of it probably and the bit you're most likely to lose. They aren't massively expensive if you do, but try and take things apart in a clean environment um, and somewhere that's well lit and maybe not a gravel path or, or something like that. So you're minimising the amount of opportunities you have to lose these things so i've done a couple of the bearings i've rebuilt these the wear in them isn't that bad and they're hope ones so they do tend to last quite well and so what i've done is cleaned it all out in my 
um, ultrasonic cleaner. Sorry, my words are all over the place today. And I'm just going to put them all back together and then they'll be ready to go into the hub. And actually, this might be a bit of a teaching moment. If you're not familiar with what a seal bearing looks like, and these are in most things in bikes now, hubs, little brackets, headsets. And what you have is this whole unit, which has the outer race, you know, the outer race, the inner race, the seal, which is the black bit, and then inside are the bearings. And the bearings tend to run on a little cage, so you can just see them in there. And that the inner race spins around the outer race. I'm just trying to get that to focus for you. It's not too happy about it, is it? And that's what allows things to move. And what you'll find is that the outer race will be pressed into whatever surface it is. So whether it's a bottom bracket cup, a bottom bracket shell in a press fit or a headset cup or in this a hub. And then the inner race will sit with an axle through it of some description, whether that's your fork steerer, whether it's a hub axle, whether it's the bottom bracket axle and that turns. And there's a lot of different types of, of seal bearings. Um, most popular, obviously, are ceramics. They are made from, the balls are made from a ceramic material as opposed to metal. And they, that allows them to be made smoother and rounder than metal ones. So they spin better and tend to last a bit longer. They don't corrode, obviously. But that comes at quite a high price. For most people, I think stainless steel bearings make the most sense. They're not the cheapest ones you can get, but they do last longer than the cheapest ones and they will spin well. And unless you're searching out every every watt, every second, I think ceramics, or if you're riding in really, really shitty conditions, maybe there's an argument for ceramics, but I think stainless steel, that works for, for me. And I think it should probably work for you as well. So to rebuild these, it's very simple. It's got a decent grease. This one's the White Lightning Crystal Grease, which is carbon safe and it's suitable for most applications on a bike. And I've got a grease gun, which makes everything a lot more accurate, a lot less messy. And it's just a case of getting the grease into the bearing. Taking your seal, making sure that it's clean and everything must be dry as well. And then do the other side. And press that in. And then you'll just feel a little bit more resistance with the seals in there and it should still feel smooth. Usually, a seal bearing you could probably rebuild it a couple of times maybe and then after that the bearings will have worn or rusted or corroded too much to for it to be viable to be sensible to to do um you're kind of just wasting time really so that's that one there what i do is crack on with the rest of them because i didn't realize how long this was going to take you don't need to see me do this another three times so we'll come back in a sec once i've done the rest of them and then we'll carry on. There we go. Magic of cinema. Those are all done. So, if you've read much about fitting seal bearings, the, the guy in his garage, the guy in his shed, will, and behind his keyboard, will say to you that a socket set and a hammer will work to get bearings in. And he does to an extent. And the principle behind that is that sockets have a round surface that isn't completely flat. Uh, there's, a, there's a gap in the middle. And when you go to push a bearing in, press a bearing in, you can only press on the outer race that I've explained earlier. If you press onto the, the seal or the inner race, you will damage the bearing. You can push the inner race out and collapse the bearing. So the principle is that you find a socket that fits over the bearing. As you can see, this one 
doesn't. So it's a case of finding the right socket and then getting it into the hub or whatever you're doing, belting it with a hammer. But what can happen with that is the socket can slip um, and then it will dig into the, the bearing, which obviously you don't want to do for, for what I've just explained. And then also it doesn't really allow you to, to control how square everything gets pressed in. If you press a bearing in crooked, this one will go into the free hub, the top of the free hub here. If it goes in crooked, it can damage the whatever surface it's going into. It will stretch it, it can crack it. And if it does stretch it, it will mean that the bearing won't fit snugly and it won't work properly. All that will happen is that the, the bearing will rattle around in the, the part that it's fitted to and it will wear your frame, your hub, whatever it might be. Um, and yeah, it will wreck whatever's happening. So the next step up, which is a no brainer for any shop, is to have a set of, of drifts for putting the bearings in. And these are in specific sizes for specific bearings and they fit perfectly over the bearing and they tend to either come with a, a threaded bar with handles on it like this wheels manufacturing one and then that will have various stepped bearing drifts to press the bearings in and that will square it all up the other thing that can happen is you will get guides so this one and this one pretty sure yeah there you go they go together so there's no movement in that that will go in square and it's not going to wreck your your parts so what we'll do is we'll start with the first bearing in the free hub and we, we assemble the bearings into the free hub and then do the pulls and the springs because that just stops everything flapping around and it's a, a sensible idea to make everything clean obviously as i've said and then go in with a little bit of grease this is a, a fenix bearing grease this brush has seen better days hasn't it And then we can guide that in there and then we can find a drift that fits the other section of that so that fits in nicely and this is where we come to use the vice i don't know why i'm tapping the vice you can't see it so i will turn around and again this is better than a hammer because it allows you to do things squarely Just check the shot before I do this. There you go. So the bearing is ready to go into the hub. The drifts are in place. The guides are in place. Everything's square. And then I can just gently tighten the bearing in. And there we go. That's seated in there. There's no real, even a, a reason to check it's flush because we know it will be. We should. And then we'll go to the next one, which is on the inside. It's that one. All right, very well going like that. Let me just find another drift that fits. And it's the same process again. And in my tools, you need to own series that I've started. Go and watch it if you haven't. I explain how the right tool. Oh, you know what I've done? I've missed the spacer out. Live and uncut. I'm going to have to take that bearing out because I've missed this spacer. I'm chatting too much. But at least I found out now before I go to put it all back together. So bear with me a sec. I'm just going to persuade that bearing back out again. Yeah. 
and doing the persuading is a punch. This one's a snap on one. They're really nice. They've lasted really well. They're quite solid. They don't tend to sort of deform. And apparently this curved section here makes the transfer of impact more accurate. But you know, snap on in it. Gotta to, got to go for it. So let's try that again. A little bit of grease. Put my guide in. Where's my spacer gone? There it is. Spacer in. Bearing in. And that's ready again. And then last but not least, the last bearing, and that needs a spacer in it as well. A little bit more grease. Just leave in there. Bearing in there. And then let's just find our slightly shorter press we've got. I don't think my vice is going to go that far. There we go. That one fits snugly in there. And hopefully, Pope have etched the description of all of their parts. So this one says Pro 2 Evo, non-drive side. And these, these tools are a bit old, so they're not quite up to standards of the newer Hope hubs, but because Hope uses a lot of interchangeable bearings, you can figure it out. There we go. Rear body with bearings in. Simple as that. Cool, there we go. So I've put the first pull spring in I'm going to do the next one, and the next one. And the spring is just this little leaf, leaf type thing. Just got this curled bit of metal in it. And you slot those into one side of the freehub body. And then the pull, P-A-W-L. Paul, P A U L, like me. And that goes in the other end. And I've got a pick to do this, but a screwdriver or something will probably do the job. You might even be a bit more dexterous and be able to get your fingers in there. So, the way this works, if you're not aware, is that these are pushed out by the springs. The pulls are pushed out by the springs, you can see that. So when the wheel goes in one direction, the pulls are pushed down. And then when you go into the other direction, the driving direction, the pulls dig in. And as you turn the pedal, it engages with the wheel and it turns the wheel round. So I'm going to bring the camera up and show you this hub again. So, some white pads. There we go. So you can see in there the teeth in the free hub, uh, in the hub shell. And what happens is the free hub fits in. I'm just going to move the camera some more. Hopefully, without the, the seal there and the grease, you can see the hub engaging. This 
Might need another shot, won't it? There we go. Got it. So there's the pool. And that's how it works. And that's drive and freewheeling. So as you turn the hub, as you turn the cranks, the hub shell turns, and then when you're freewheeling, it takes. And people talk about engagements, hub engagements with uh, when you read reviews on hubs and wheels and things. And what that means is the the time it takes between the free hub engaging with the the teeth in in the hub shell and turning turning the wheel and that's why you've got four here so those four pulls all engaged at the same time to so get a really strong pull and loads of power transfer and then the more of the teeth that there are the more the quicker the engagement, the less kind of half pedals. If you sit on your bike and back pedal and then forward pedal, just in a few degrees at a time, you can feel this kind of dead spot between the pools engaging and disengaging. I'm not really doing a very good job with that, am I? Um, and that, the more of those there are, the quicker the, quicker the hub will engage and the less dead spots there are as you're freewheeling and then starting to pedal again. So I hope I've got this down to quite a few now. And the more of those there are, the stronger and more aggressive the springs are, the louder the noise. And then obviously this is amplified somewhat by quite a resonating carbon rim. So I'm gonna do another shot. We're gonna get the hub ready get the axle in. Okay, part three. <clears throat> so, the hub. So the principle's the same, it's just a little bit more unwieldy because you've got spokes and a rim on it. So I'm just gonna prep that with a little bit of grease again. And then the axle. Bearing on and we balance that on the you can use I, I tend to do it on the floor just because my shed's a bit small but this means that you guys can see it a bit better hopefully and then my top bearing or my, my drive side bearing let's just get that prepped for grease as well Get the guide in there and what you can see with that is this thing about it being square the step and step on the bearing tool fits into the hub shell so just guide the bearing in I can and I don't want to damage my tools too much so I'm using this nylon faced hammer so it doesn't distort the aluminium and then a couple of little taps Alright, let's set up the next shot get the free hub in, get the cassette on, and we'll be away. Okay. So what did I say about spaces before? Make sure you get all your spaces back in. There's always explosive views and technical drawings and things like that that will help you with the process. But usually you'll find if you get it wrong. So that space is on there between the hub bearing and the free hub. Free hub is ready. I've put some grease 
and the White Lightning stuff. I uh, hope you use this amazing ultramarine blue grease, um, which I am halfway in the process of tracking, tracking down. But as far as I can see, you can only get it in massive, massive vats. And I do have services a lot, but I don't do that many. But this works really well and it's available from your bike shop. I can get it for you. Just let me know. And then this is the only really fiddly bit. It's just getting the free hub to line up with all of the the pulls, uh, the, the, the notches, the teeth. And there we go. And that's in. And then there's just the free hub seal to get on. Again, glass covered with that. Uh, that just pushes on. Oh, you missed it. Didn't have it in shot. I'll show you again. And amazingly, what always confounded me was the fact that all of this is just pushed into place. So, there we go, that's a better way of doing it, isn't it? And then it's just the free hub seal tool there. And that just pushes it on. And that just holds it in. That's mad, isn't it? Then end caps, fortunately, hope are very smart. They make their end caps different, so you can't get confused. They're nice and easy to tell. So that's the silver one on the dry side. A little bit of grease on there. And then the non drive there. It just pushes on. There we go. And then with the hope stuff, what you'll find is that the uh, end caps are interchangeable, and those are the things I've just shown you. So on disc brake wheels, you can change the end caps for quick release for all the different two axles. Um, so that makes it a bit more standard. And interestingly. The RS, the Hope Road Hub, the rim brake one, comes with different end caps, so you can put it onto a 135 hub, which works for hybrids or some touring bikes. They use wider, wider hub spacings. So, yeah, keep that, keep that under your hat. It's worth knowing. So that's all in. That's all together. And then we're just going to put the cassette on. I don't need to show you how to do a cassette. We all. We all know how to do one of those. And that's just looking for the specific thin spline. And making sure you get them all in the right order. And then on some cassettes, the spacing is different than the spacers. So do you double check when you take the cassette off that you put the spacers in a sensible stack in sequence. And I know with this Shimano one, it's, it's not one that has individual spacer sizes. So we can, as long as we just make sure that all of the Sprockets in the right order. And it's all very self explanatory. Last sprocket. Not ring. And then you can use a socket type cassette tool. It's got a QR guide on it. And cassettes need to go up to about 40 newton meters, which is pretty damn tight. So I've got this, which is an Abbey uh, combi tool, which has got the Campag block ring fitting on one side and the Shimano on the other. I'm just going to put this on the floor so that I can get it talked up.
And there it is. The hub drivers are good to go.